Minnesota is among the strictest states when it comes to cameras in courtrooms, and the legislature may take action to further restrict access. Joining me in the studio to discuss this is Senator Jerry Rolfe. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So my first question is kind of long, but under current law, if all parties agree prior to the commencement of, a, of criminal proceedings, cameras are already allowed in the courtroom, though this rarely happens. Minnesota Supreme Court Justice Lilla Hogg recently referred to the case in Michigan with the USA uh, gymnastics team doctor who assaulted all of those athletes. Um, that trial was broadcast and the testimony of the victims was incredibly powerful. He argues that cameras in criminal court could aid trust in government. What do you think about, about Justice Lilla Hogg's thoughts on that? Well, first of all, in that particular case, we would have been able to do the same thing in Minnesota had the witnesses and, and the parties yeah, if agreed, agreed, if everyone agreed. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that to, to put it in a situation where it's the, it's the camera in the courtroom that provides the, the openness and transparency, I think is, is a diversion because we have access to the courtroom. You, uh, as, as uh, many prosecutors and people involved in this, in this uh, uh, controversy, I'll call it, have said, the courts are open, come on down. And we've always had reporters in the courtroom. Uh, you, all of you, I'm sure, can remember the sketches and, mm -hmm. and the drawings. And to, to necessarily have that witness actually recorded on camera may be a powerful statement, provided that witness is comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. The problem that we run into is the chilling effect before we ever get to the courtroom. And that's the concern I have. I'm a former prosecutor, although not, not a great deal of it, but I, was a, I, I prosecuted for some cities in southern Minnesota, and I also, was also a defense uh, attorney. Mm -hmm. So I understand the courtroom and the dynamics that go on, but I also understand how hard it is for prosecutors to just get people to come forward. In, in the cases of sexual, uh, sexual assault or sexual abuse, m less than 14% of those actually get reported. And it's in many respects because the victims are afraid. They're afraid of the notoriety. They're afraid of the, the, their being exposed to the system. And then if they knew that they would really have to testify and everyone would see it, that would just further be more chilling of an effect. More and more traumatic. Well, let's turn to your bill. Um, in 2015, the Minnesota Supreme Court began a pilot project which mm -hmm. allowed cameras during sentencing of criminal court proceedings with only the judge's permission, so nobody else had a say anymore. Your bill would essentially prohibit this pilot project from continuing. Why, why take that tack? Well, I'll, I'll take it in the, in the terms or the words of Justice Page on our Supreme Court. And he said it's the nose under the tent. And that he is very concerned, as I am, that this is just one step in the progression that would ultimately open. And in fact, I understand that the uh, representatives of the media are seeking to go back to the Supreme Court and ask them to remove some of the restrictions, mainly dealing with uh, cases of sexual, uh, of violence, sexual violence, abuse, domestic violence, and allow those cases to be, to be broadcast. Now, it, it seems to me that the that sounds like the idea of, gee, let's see the sentencing and let's see that let's expose the criminals is a good one. But we already do that, and not necessarily on on camera in the courtroom. But typically, the the, the again, the courts are open, and and the media has access. It's just they don't have that camera, and and it's that part of it that's troubling. And and the, it, it troubles you because of the fear of what? The chilling effect. Again, okay. the, 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 there was testimony I know in the in the House uh, hearing on this uh, bill that other states have it, and there's been no noticeable effect. The problem is you can't measure something that didn't happen, and there's no way of measuring the hesitancy to pick up the phone when something happens if there's a fear that that by picking up that phone you're actually calling the media as opposed to the police. There's no way to measure that. And to, it's disingenuous at best, I think, to say that there has been no effect because you, 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 the effect took place long before the courtroom. And, and I'll kind of paraphrase, not every phone call leads to a prosecution, but every prosecution starts with a phone call. And if we, if we chill that initial contact with the court, I think that 
just one victim who fails to, to call because of that is too many. Uh, I, I rarely use that kind of a phrase, but in this case, I think it's important. Um, especially, I've, been, I've had a long history of, of working with people, uh, of victims of both sexual abuse and domestic violence. I was on the, the uh, board of the Battered Women's Shelter in St. Cloud for almost 10 years. And so I've seen the effects. I know what happens. And, and, and it's very difficult sometimes, especially when, this, when the person has been traumatized and now they're, at, they're supposed to pick up the phone and they're not sure what that's going to do. One other point I'd like to get to is has to do with the separation of powers, mm -hmm. which is an essential pillar of our government. Is legislative action telling the courts what they can and can't do an overreach by the legislature? I, 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 I agree that there's a question there. And originally, if you'll remember, the bill said that you couldn't spend money to mm -hmm. put, to do put. Yes. that to me would, was was a clear violation. The, the, you can't. That, that's like the, like what happened to our legislature. Right. <laughs> and so I so I I would and and when I first saw this, I said, no, we can't go with this. So as you can see, it has been it has been totally amended to regulate the the proceeding in a sense that I think that what's happening here is is that. The judiciary ha is clearly an autonomous body, and heaven help us if we in interfere with that. On the other hand, if we are dealing with the criminal process and the process of br the actual process of bringing people before the courts, it seems to me that there there we have the op opportunity to at least look at the effect of the rules, and if they are creating a chilling a, a chilling effect on the on the the actual criminal process before it even gets to the courtroom. I feel that because we do legislate the laws, we, we create the laws that the, that the prosecutors enforce and that the courts actually, actually hear. So I think that there is a point where there is a fine line there, and I agree that it's a very fine line, but I do think that this is not an overreach. Senator Rolf, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Okay, thank you for having me.